Welcome back to How to Build Software Without Coding. I'm Mr. Hackathon. I show you how to build software without coding. And in today's tutorial, we're going to do something really interesting. We're going to create an automation that allows you to search any document using AI. And to do this, we're going to use Zapier. Zapier has been one of the automation platforms that have been really innovating in the AI space and they have lots of really cool AI integrations and features that we're going to explore. The tool or the application we're going to create is we are going to create a tool that searches a specific page or report from the UK government's website. So as you can see, the UK government's website, a little bit outdated, especially with all this new AI functionality. But what we're going to do is here in research and statistics, I've actually selected a report and we have the report here and we are going to create a way that we can enhance the search of this report. So the user answers a, answers a question and it's going to take us directly to the section of the report that is most interesting to the user. So that is most relevant. One of the reasons you use AI for this, because AI, especially the large language models, they understand context really well, context of the question, but also context of the, the document that you're searching. Let's get started. The way we're going to do this in Zapier is we are going to take the user's input from a Google form. I'm just using a Google form, but you can really use anything. And I'm, I'll show you in a little bit what I mean by you can use anything to take it user's input. And we're gonna use OpenAI, I believe, to actually do the search. And we are going to return the data back to the user via email. To do this in Zapier, what we do, we just have to find Google form. Yep. And I want to connect this to OpenAI. And we're going to make a zap. And that's a zap is just an automation. Here you can see our trigger and our action. So first what we want to do is my Google Forms is not integrated or it's not integrated. So what I'm going to have to do, just to double check. Okay, I have to create, uh, connect my Google Forms account, or connect my Google account. And I have lots of email addresses, but we're gonna connect it with this one. Hit allow. And so now it's connected, very, very simple. And what we're going to do is hit continue. And now I need to select a form. What I actually have here is a form and all it's doing is taking the user email and taking the user question. Very, very simple. So we jump back. I can go ahead and find. And then we hit test trigger. And what we should see is this is the question right here from a previous form I sub submitted while I was testing this automation. You can see the created time, last submitted time, the user email. Really, we just need the question in user email. And we hit continue. What we need to do now is actually connect OpenAI because now we have the question from the user. What we want is OpenAI, but what we want specifically is this search embeddings. And this allows us to do like a smart search on any document. So we hit, now I need to hit, uh, I need to create, uh, connect my OpenAI account. And I'm just double checking which one it is. Okay. So I connected my OpenAI account. If, if, because I already have mine kind of preset, if you wanted your developer keys, I'll just show you how to do that. So we're going to hit log in. I am going to log in.
And so what you will do to get your developer keys is go to personal, view API keys, and you can see your API keys here. If we jump back, hit continue. And so what we have here, we need a query. So we need a question or a string. You can see a string that you want to search. So we're going to put the question and we're going to use this from the form. So this is write your query below and the answer to, to that. And let me just double check. Yeah, so that's what we're going to use. And here, this is the interesting part. So this is the documents part. And this is required. This is what you want them to search through. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm actually, and there's lots of different ways to do this, but I, I started from right here. There's lots of different ways to do this, but what I am going to do is I'm just going to copy all this information. I am going to hit copy and I'm actually going to go to chat GPT. And so right here, and I might have to log in again. So the thing about when you're doing creating these search tools, and there's lots of tools and ways to be able to do this. And so I'm just showing you one way that's I think is relatively easy. This is too much information to search. So this has to be broken up into smaller parts. And you'll see what I mean. So I'm going to tell chat GPT, reduce the following into text chunks for semantic search. And it's a little bit messy, but let's just see what it does. So you can see it's reducing the following into text chunks for semantic search. Now I haven't reviewed all of this and you probably, and actually I can see that maybe let's say continue because it doesn't seem to have done everything. Okay, so yeah, there was more. So I'm probably just going to use these this 1 to 12 because this is a tutorial, so I'm just showing you an example. And again, there's, there's many other ways to do this, but this is just one way. The point is you need to break the document into chunks and have it there. So I'm going to copy 1 to 12. And even though we're doing this for tu a tutorial, I do think this can be an amazing service for uh, for a startup or that you can potentially provide if you're a consultancy, that you can allow, you can create the service that allows government websites to be easily queried and searched using AI. Four, five, Six. So we're going to do all 12. Eleven. We've got one more.
Okay. And then it says, should this step be considered a success when nothing is found? And we say no. We're going to go ahead and test. So we're going to test this action. So what you can see is that it's it's ordered the it's ordered the document quote unquote documents that we put in the order of the relevance based on the question and each relevance has been given a score of how relevant it is based on the initial question obviously the initial question we had had nothing to do with um I'm not even sure what type of document this is but it had nothing to do with surveillance uh, camera systems but it still attempted to order them in terms of relevance and so we're going to add another step because what we have done now we've taken the user's input we have done a search and what we need to do now is return the output to the user and the way I'm going to do this is with Gmail. I am, let's see, I am going to send an email. Go ahead and hit continue. That's connected, that works fine. And I'm gonna send that to, and I'm gonna use the form response and get the user's email from there. I am going to use the subject line and I'm just going to write a static subject line. So I'm going to call this Zapier search tutorial or Zapier AI search tutorial. And then the body, you can elaborate on the body, but I am just going to put match it with the best match value. So you can see the best match score, the best match value. I'm going to match it with the best match value. And I'm actually going to test this because it says no data there. So I'm also going to match it with... Let's see. Here. This best match value. So that's probably a little bit better. And then I'm going to hit continue. So I've got a body. I have a subject and I have who I'm sending it to. I hit test action. And what it's going to do, it's going to send me an email. So if I shoot over to my email, I just heard from my iPad that it, it got there. So I'm going to go to my email. And you can see it right here. And so we're going to test this again, but we're going to test this in real time. To test it in real time, what we need to do is publish our zap. And it's publishing. Now it's published. And it's on. So this should happen automatically now. So we're going to go to our form. We're going to... I need to do it from the live version. So I'm, I'm on my form, I put my email. And my query, so we're just gonna take a look at this again because I think this is about surveillance camera systems. Okay, I'm going to ask a basic question. How many local authorities were and take a look again canvassed how many local authorities were canvassed and we're going to hit submit
And in a couple of seconds, I should receive an email. Haven't received it yet. So we're going to jump out of this and just see. Okay. I think I might have received it now. If I refresh this. Okay. It's here. And you can see of the 340, 354 local authorities canvassed, 143 provided responses. So it is giving us the answer from the text and directly jump into the the point in the text is that is most relevant to the question we have done this for the use case of a government website or government website report but you can use this for any use case whatsoever so that is a very quick tutorial on how to create a semantic search application or a semantic search automation it's more an automation using zapier open ai and google forms before we head out i'll just show you how you can adapt this for different use cases so the part that needs to stay the same really and truly is this middle part but your trigger could be anything so i have a trigger with google forms here but you could use if I hit edit, I have a trigger with Google Forms, but you could change this to Gmail as your trigger and read an email input. You can change this to um, Odalo, let's say o Odalo, and read a, a new submission in Odalo. Odalo is a no-code tool for creating native applications. So you can create a native application this way. And instead of, if I use Odalo, a new uh, data entry or new um, input into the database, I can put the output back to that same database. Same with the output. You can change this from Gmail to Twilio and send an MS SMS. You can... Let me think. I'm not sure if it has Facebook. Yep, you can send a Facebook uh, messenger message. So there's lots of different variations for you to do this and create some really interesting automations and interesting applications using no code, low code, and automation. If you have any questions whatsoever, please feel free to reach out to me. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more automation, AI, no-code, low-code content.